Now, curses and debuffs are popular concepts in the world of video games. They strike unsuspecting players when they least expect it and bombard them with weaknesses, penalties, and other fun mechanics that are designed solely to ruin your day. And debuffs tend to act like sticks for beating unruly and careless players. But you know what? This being said, sometimes there are actually hidden benefits to being cursed and weakened. So let's have a chat about them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game debuffs that actually make you stronger. Number 10. Addiction, Fallout 76. Now, addiction is a mechanic that has always existed in the Fallout series. Starting with Fallout 1, consuming large amounts of drugs or alcohol would cause your character to become addicted to them and turn all of their advantages into a dependence that severely limited your abilities when not under the effect of your poison of choice. The mechanic has had a prominent place in other games as well, but Fallout 76 might be the only one that not only features perks that mitigate the negative effects of addiction, but also make your character even stronger thanks to them. The Junkie build is one of several character builds in the game, whose main gimmick is turning your crippling addiction into crippling damage to your enemies. The perks you pick up for this build allow you to stack your damage output for every type of drug and alcohol you're hooked on. While other characters suffer from dependencies and withdrawals, junkies thrive with every bit of addictive substance that enters their bodies. It may not make for the best life lesson, but being a junkie is the most effective way to live your life in Fallout 76. Number 9. Trauma Savant Rimworld Getting shot in the head in Rimworld is a about as fun as it is in real life. If the bullet isn't going to kill your colonist immediately, it's going to give them permanent brain damage that severely limits their dexterity and communication skills. And yet, despite all of this, you're probably going to want some of your colonists to sustain some permanent brain damage, because in RimWorld, there's actually a rare and hidden benefit to losing bits of your brain. Although the chances of it are quite slim, there is an event in the game that triggers when a colonist is shot in the head. Instead of killing or maiming them, the bullet scrambles their brains in such a peculiar way that it gives them the trauma a savant trait. The trait makes your character incapable of speech, but their dexterity, movement, and intelligence are greatly increased, turning them into ideal soldiers, craftsmen, and researchers. So if your colonist is in quite the pinch during a gunfight, don't lose your head. Chances are they might get stronger if they lose theirs instead. Number 8. Balderkin's Blessing – Elden Ring Balderkin's Blessing, despite its deceptive name, is actually a curse from Elden Ring that your character gets if they decide to comfort Fia, the deathbed companion, and hug her. Your act of kindness gives you a permanent penalty to your health bar, making it seem like a rather unattractive prospect. And yet, even though the blessing is a detriment to most classes in the game, there is one build that can actually benefit from it instead. The item you get along with your blessing lowers your health by 5% while it's in your inventory, but if you decide to use it, it gives you more poise, which is used to resist the effects of flinching and staggering attacks. The debuff is detrimental to most characters, but if your character is built around heavy armor and shields, having more poise to absorb hits can actually be more useful than having extra health. It's a fair trade-off that makes giving her a hug worth it. Just remember though that unless you're not planning on making your character a tanky knight, you should probably still utilize some basic form of social distancing. Number 7. Unlucky – Sims 3 The Sims 3 features a big collection of personality traits for your Sims, and although the game is more about the experience than optimization, some of these traits come with objectively detrimental debuffs, like the unlucky trait, which causes your character to get in more accidents, lose more competitions, and generally be a walking manifestation of misfortune. A lot of Sims 3 players avoid picking the unlucky trait due to this, but what they don't know is that there's actually a hidden benefit to being consistently down on your luck. Because yes, the trait makes you life's greatest loser, but their misfortunes don't hit them as hard as they would other sims. You see, whenever bad luck causes unlucky sims to die, the Grim Reaper will refuse to claim their soul, stating that your sims' mishaps are too amusing to stop them too early. While other sims are guaranteed to be hauled to the great unknown the moment that something bad happens to them, unlucky ones have a few bad accidents in them before the Grim Reaper has to take them away. After all, when you hit rock bottom in misfortune, the only way to go is up. Number 6. Kitetsu – Ninja Gaiden Kitetsu is a cursed sword from Ninja Gaiden that offers its wielder great powers, but at an equally great cost. The sword can be obtained after your second fight with Doku. It deals amazing damage and features a unique moveset, but as long as you keep it equipped, it will slowly drain your life away. The only way to prevent this debuff is to constantly attack and drain your enemy's life force. And while this may sound like a deal breaker to less aggressive players, it's actually a way to remove the curse, or better yet, make it work to your benefit. If you equip the Amulet of Tranquility, the draining effect it has on Ryu gets disabled, but the curse still works on your enemies. You no longer have to worry about slowly withering 
wandering away, but your enemies still get their life force stolen, which means that killing them heals you instead of simply patching up your degrading health. Come to think of it, it's pretty nice of the blade to heal you, even if you don't let it feed on you. It may be a demonic blade forged with ogre blood, but Kitetsu sure knows how to act like a gentle sword. Number 5. Sanguinaire Vampiris The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim After oblivion, the reputation of vampirism in the Elder Scrolls games has gone quite sour. The vampiric curse has been seen as an actual curse, as once somebody has infected you with it, your character will suffer damage in sunlight and have to feed on blood in order to keep themselves remotely functional. Sanguinaire Vampiris from Skyrim, though, is not so severe, but does also suffer from a similar reputation. It's seen as an inferior version of the Vampire Lord from Dawnguard with all of the disadvantages and zero benefits, except that the base game disease version of the curse can be pretty strong as well. You see, vampires in Skyrim also suffer from sunlight, which significantly hinders their regeneration. Additionally, if they don't feed for long enough, the NPCs around them will consider them hostile, but letting your character get thirsty actually comes with some fun benefits. You see, vampiric hunger has multiple stages, and each one unlocks new powers for you to play with, including a free calm spell, corpse resurrection, and even invisibility. It can also be a great way to obtain powerful spells early in the game, and if you're still hungry for more power, you can also become a full vampire lord with the Dawnguard DLC. Just because you're a vampire doesn't mean that it has to suck. Number 4. Rot Armello. Now, Rot is a special affliction in the 2015 digital board game Armello that plays a key role in the title's gameplay. It's a curse that spreads throughout the kingdom and can corrupt your character, causing them to suffer damage every single morning and making it harder to fight the Rot-created banes that, that gain additional dice in combat against you for every point of Rot they have over yours. Early on in the game, Rot can be an incredibly punishing debuff, as you'll find yourself suffering damage and dying all the bloody time. However, with a little preparation, Rot can become the most powerful weapon in the game. You see, every time you kill or get killed by a rot creature, you absorb some of its rot. The more rot you have, the harder it is to cure yourself, but you also get more dice for fighting other rot-infected characters, including the infected king, who you need to kill in order to win the game. If you just focus on maximizing your rot points instead of curing them, you can accumulate so many points that even this fight with the king will be a walk in the park. After all, if you can't beat them, join them and then beat them with their own rot-infested weapons. Number 3. Witch Crusader Kings 3 As was the case with the real medieval world, the digital version of Crusader Kings 3 takes religious matters very seriously. Being branded a heretic can have some pretty grave consequences for your character, especially if their brand of heresy likes to practice the dark arts. The witch trait is given to any character who decides to study the forbidden law of their official religion. The label can have some pretty grave consequences for your ruler, as it gives permanent penalties to relations with other members of your religion and lets people blackmail you for it. On the other hand, being a witch also allows you to start your own coven and gain scholarly experience faster, and if you know what you're doing, you can use this feature to forge your debuffs into buffs. If you capture important religious centers of your religion, you can reform it using devotion points to enact a Witch Tolerance Act and grant positive relations for witch characters instead of making them targets to ridicule. To get devotion points faster, you can use your coven abilities to accumulate more scholar experience, which will significantly speed up the process. Lovely stuff. Number 2. Tharkiite Withering, Baldur's Gate 3 Now, curses are a pretty common occurrence in the fantasy world of Baldur's Gate 3. Pretty much any enemy spellcaster can bestow some sort of curse on you, and you even spend an entire act of the game trapped inside a cursed realm. Luckily, most of these curses can be pretty easily dealt with, and in the case of this one special curse called the Tharkiite Withering, removing it can make you even stronger. You see, in Act 3, when you sneak inside Laroa Khan's secret archive, there are several unique and legendary books for you to find. Most of these books grant you unique spells or abilities but the necromatic grimoire called the Tharkiite Codex curses you for reading it instead. And when this happens, don't fret, my friend, as the curse is actually pretty easy to remove, requiring only a simple remove curse spell. In fact, curing the affliction will turn it into a permanent buff that provides your character with 20 temporary hit points per long rest. To maximize the benefit of this curse, be sure to make your tanky barbarian character read the book so that they can get even more health to absorb hits with, because a pen of necromatic magic is definitely mightier than the sword. And number one, the Cursed Shield, Final Fantasy VI. The Final Fantasy series has a long history of bad items and classes with secret potential, from the early iteration of Onion Knights to joke weapons that can be turned into legendary gear. Final Fantasy VI features a similar concept with the so-called Cursed Shield, except the shield doesn't just start off weak, it also actively weakens you, making it especially annoying to use. The Cursed Shield can be found in the World of Ruin, hiding behind a locked wall, and when you pick it up the game will inform you that the item has a curse on it, but there might be some way to remove it. By this, the game actually means using the shield exactly 256 times in battle, so 
if you want to fix the shield, you'll be spending a lot of time suffering its devastating debuffs that decrease your stats by 7 points and make you weak to all elemental damage. The struggle is worth it, however, as once you overcome the curse and meet the battle quota, the curse shield will turn into the paladin shield, which makes you immune to most damage in the game and absorbs the effects of elemental forces. It is the ultimate glow up of military gear. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video game debuffs that actually make you stronger. I hope that you enjoyed that and let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Instagram and AEX, where it's at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there and I hope that you are treating yourself well. Big love to you all. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.